Hey everybody, it's Zipic, and welcome back to another Rust base build. With the recent spike in Rust players, I've decided that this base build needed to be a big one. This insanely strong trio and quad group base incorporates some of my best designs in all of my bases, which includes peak downs, a shooting floor, external TCs, and even a compound. Now with all of that said, let me introduce you to my 2x2 floor stacked roof bunker design. After Face Punch's last 4 swipe, roof bunkers were seemingly patched. That is until Evil Rust had the great idea of simply upgrading both roof pieces. Then by placing a twig low wall above both pieces, we can seal off our 2x2 for the night. We'll come back to this concept in just a minute, but for now let's get right into the base tour. Now heading in past the front door of our compound, we have a simple airlock gate. Of course, if you guys would rather do something more complex, I'll link Red Apple's gate design in the description. Our front door has a basic airlock, and we have two windows to see the outside of our compound. Heading up our garage door path, we have a long series of corridors which will lead us to the center of our 2x2. Now at the intersection of our base, we'll head over to the left side. We have a few furnaces behind a glass window, and also the access to our roof. Heading through yet another basic airlock onto our roof floor, we'll get access to our bedrooms as well as our peak downs. We'll keep a locker placed in this room for the event of an online raid, and you can see heading out into the shooting floor, I've used the triangle floor grills to serve as another peak down, and we can use these to spot anyone who may be in our compound. Through the final garage door, we'll have a few boxes as well as the full roof access to our base. Now up here, there's plenty of room to expand or add in a heli garage. With the upstairs now finished, we'll head back down to the intersection of garage doors and continue on going to the right. As we enter into the inner 2x2, notice how much open space there is. I've decided to not fill it in and allow you, the viewer, to choose what to do with it. Up here, we have our basic repair bench, research table, extra bags, and a few boxes with a campfire in the middle for comfort. Falling down both of these hatches will lead us into the main bunker portion of our base. You can see here we're stopped at the bunker, so we'll go ahead and spawn inside and continue the tour on from there. Now spawn inside of our bunker, notice the tier 3 to the right, and also a few boxes above us. If we open the closest garage door, we'll have full access to our roof bunker, as well as a few boxes underneath. By looking past the boxes, you'll see the twig piece which holds our roof bunker together. If we demolish this, our roof bunker will change sockets and open up giving us full access to the rest of our base. If we open up the door to our left, we'll get access to the second half of our 2x2. In here we have a few extra bags and boxes, and right now I'll also show you how to seal off the bunker. And behind the final door we have TC, 4 large boxes, and 4 small boxes. The TC upkeep is on your screen now, and with all that said, let's get right into the base build. Now guys, getting right into the starter, we're going to use Evil Burst's floor stack design. This will allow us to floor stack very easily and without any issues. We're going to look for this line on our foundation, and place a small box right on top of it. Now, only holding crouch, we can place in our first foundation and then slowly move down the ramp until the second one comes up as blue. We should only hold D when we're moving down the ramp and take our hand off of the mouse. This will ensure we don't change our player's orientation. If this is the first time you are attempting a floor stack base, I would recommend watching the video in the top right hand corner before you continue on with building. Now with all that said, as long as there's no gaps in between our walls once we test them, we can go ahead and continue on with the starter base. Use the following footprint to build in your starter. Also remove this lower triangle and replace it with a raised one along the side. Then we can remove our original raised triangle and build in the following footprint. I use this basic pattern the whole way around the base. Note that you may need to pause the video and take some time to get it built. Once finished we can go ahead and place in 4 triangles in each of the gaps. And with all of that finished we can remove any foundation that is not directly connected to our 2x2. Now we're going to go around the outside of the base and attempt to place in walls on all of these slots. If any of the walls come up as red, this is the time to restart as you probably had a small gap in your original foundations. Now that we've ensured all of our outer foundations work, we can remove all of them but these two and then begin to upgrade to stone. Now let's begin to get in all of our walls. 
We're going to start by doing the back half of the 2x2 and wrap around to the front. And over here by our entrance, we're going to place in a half wall and then a full wall. And then two more half walls on top to balance out the gap. Let's upgrade all of these to stone. Now since this is just our starter base, we're going to place our front door on the ground for now. Just ensure that you only upgrade your door frames to wood, and that also goes for our drop down chute, which we're going to upgrade later on. Now building in a wall frame in the center of our base, we can place in a roof piece on top, and that will allow us to finish off our 2x2 two two with a half wall. We'll also add in this full wall which will protect our TC. Our roof pieces will then follow on top. And finally we can add in our second airlock, and again just remember to upgrade the door frame to only wood since we'll be picking it out later on. Now let's add in all the doors, and also add in the TC. Now to avoid getting flame rated since the front area of our base is quite vulnerable, we're going to build in our roof bunker right now. We can just make it out of stone, but it will guarantee that our base will be much stronger and survive against the starting wipe. Now let's add in a few door frames to prepare for the doors we're going to have crafting, and also we can add in this triangle piece next to TC for extra box space. And speaking of box space, let's get two large boxes underneath our roof piece. We can also fit in our tier 2, a small box, and don't forget to place in your bags. This is very crucial since if you die and your bunker is sealed, there's no way of getting back in unless you pick it out. I've built in a few more large boxes in our TC room for our best loot, and in the room right next to that we can place in another couple large boxes just for a little bit more storage. We can fit in a few more small things like barbecues, small boxes, and extra bags. And at this point our first starter is finished. The upgrade cost for the next section is on the screen now. With all that said, let's get right into it. We're going to begin by picking out all of our wooden door frames. I would recommend machetes or cleavers as they're the most effective tools for this job. You'll need about 5 machetes if you choose to do it this way. And of course don't forget to pick out the roof as well. Now have some furnaces prepared as we're going to build in our drop down chute. As most likely we don't have a ladder, we're going to place a furnace for now on top of this twig to reach up to our front door. Underneath the twig we're going to place in 3 more furnaces. If you're having issues placing them in, try rotating them first, and they should come up as blue. Now we're going to finish up the drop down chute, and add in a normal single door frame on the very top. On top of the drop down chute, you'll have an option to either place in the upper or lower roof piece. Ensure you place it in the lower of these two slots, and you won't have to worry about anyone picking in. Since only a small amount of the soft side is showing, it's still treated as a hard side wall. With phase 2 finished, we can now begin to move on to phase 3. We're going to start by placing in all of the outer foundations once again. If you need to, go back to the starter base and repeat the same process. If you already have metal ready, skip this step and upgrade all the foundations straight to metal. Now we're ready to add in our outer honeycomb, let's begin by adding stone walls on every side of our 2x2. For the time being we'll add a temporary way up to our roof, and if you're worried about people breaking this out, you can upgrade it to wood and pick it out later. Now heading up to our roof floor, we're going to place in a metal roof piece on the right of our front door. And then once again, to balance out the height, we're going to fill in all of the rest with half walls all around the base. Now let's add in all the roof pieces of our honeycomb. Ensure that all of these roof pieces are on the upper of the two slots, as they can be floor stacked, but it's not really necessary. Now before we begin phase 4, it's very critical that we upgrade all of these walls to metal. So your next goal should be smelting every bit of metal that you can find, and upgrading all of these outer walls. Now 
Now based on the amount of metal we have used to upgrade the base so far, at this point I expect we have enough HQM to upgrade these two foundations, and also upgrade our one by one to armored. And of course we're also going to upgrade all the roof pieces above our 2x2 to metal. We can also add in the second floor tile above our bunker. This will avoid any raiders from picking up into our 2x2. And finally let's upgrade the wall frame to metal, add in our first garage door, and then begin placing in all of our final boxes. We can place in 4 large boxes along the side, and then 4 small boxes along the bottom left in a circle pattern. Now with our 1x1 one one complete, we can continue on to the rest of our base. If we found a ladder, we can demolish our twig tile and replace it along the side. Now back on our roof, we're going to build in the second floor of our 2x2, we're going to begin by only upgrading all these walls to stone, but eventually we'll upgrade them to metal. We're going to use a simple wraparound shape to guarantee the maximum door path, but obviously feel free to change this if you prefer a certain way. We're also going to floor stack our roof pieces now, which is going to make the raid cost much more expensive. Now let's add in all of our roof tiles to our 2x2, two two, and we'll head over and try to get our front door in. Notice here we're having issues with it, but don't worry, you just need to go downstairs and look straight up through the roof and it should come up as blue. Now we're going to go around the entirety of the base and do all of this with our door path upstairs. I'm going to leave this area open for now, however if you need extra space feel free to put extra boxes or tables up here. With that said, we're now complete phase 3 of our base, let's move on to phase 4. Our first step of phase 4 is going to be adding in a third layer of honeycomb all around the base. This is going to protect the foundations from being picked, and also increase the raid cost by quite a bit. Depending on whether you're playing modded or vanilla, you may even have enough to upgrade all these outer walls to metal as well. Once again, we're going to build in a temporary way up to our roof, with a foundation and also a half wall. But this won't be there for very long, since we just needed to place in these half walls on our second floor. We're going to go around the entirety of the base, just like the inner honeycomb, and build in all of these in stone. Notice that I've left the gap on the right side of the door open. This is very important and make sure it stays this way. And once all of our half walls have been upgraded to stone, we can go around the outside and add in all of the roof tiles on top of our newly made honeycomb. Next, let's build in our permanent way up to the roof floor. Now if you guys haven't found glass windows yet, you can replace the window frames with wall frames and then use shop fronts. Now let's build in our second single door frame and also make ourselves a way up to the roof. We'll seal off the roof of the first floor airlock, and then we'll put the walls up on the second floor for our door path. Next up, let's add in all of our double door frames. Now for this room here, you guys may choose to have furnaces, or you may choose to just keep it as honeycomb as personal preference. I'm going to go with the furnace way, but I'll show you guys how to do both. You can see here if we choose a furnace, we're going to have a furnace as our jump up, but if we just choose a wall, we can simply seal off the top floor of our door path, and then use the connection point from there to also have a crouch jump up to our roof.
Again, all personal preference, but I like the furnace way a little bit more. So we're gonna go ahead and now seal off all of the roof pieces above. You may be concerned about the slight gaps in your roof. If you are, it's a simple fix. Basically just floor stack the bottom layer of the gap and no one will be able to see into the corridor. Now we're going to begin the outer honeycomb of our second floor. Again, we can just use stone here, but if you are playing on a modded server, you may choose to upgrade these to metal. Personally, I'm going to keep these stone for my entire wipe. Now again, just like in the bottom layer, we're going to fill in all the tops of the honeycomb with the upper layer of floor stacking. Don't forget your drop down chute as well. Now finally, let's fill in the second layer of our floor stacking on the top of the roof. Now with our roof done, we'll head downstairs and upgrade the inner core of our 2x2 to metal. I'm going to leave this door frame optional and feel free to upgrade it based on what kind of doors you have. Now let's head down to the front and we'll add in sheet metal double doors, glass windows, and garage doors on all of our crouch jumps. I don't expect you guys will have enough resources to make every door a garage door, so we're going to use sheet metal double doors for now and we'll switch them out later on. Once we get these furnaces into our honeycomb, ensure that you guys keep them smelting as long as possible to start gaining more metal. And we can also prepare for the discovery of a ladder hatch by placing in this floor frame. Now we're going to begin one of the most important steps of the base, and that is of course upgrading everything to its final grade in the 2x2. If you guys do not have enough HQM, you can just upgrade everything to metal for now, and upgrade it to HQ throughout the wipe. And at this point, I'll begin to expect you guys have some more garage doors, so we'll go ahead and add those in the main core. The half wall you see me upgrading right now is very critical. Make sure you guys upgrade this to HQM if anything else, since it will defend our drop down against raiders. Ensure that all these boxes are far enough back that you're still able to place in the twig to seal off our bunker. You may have issue placing in the twig if you happen to have your garage door with the roller facing inward, so we're going to go ahead and flip that around. Don't worry, there's no splash damage caused from flipping that. Now we should be able to place in our three boxes and twig. And don't worry, you guys can of course loot the back box through either this crack or by standing on your workbench. Speaking of the workbench, let's remove it and add in the tier 3, and we can fit in a few small boxes right next to them. Now with our garage doors down, we can correctly build in the rest of this loot room and place in the rest of our bags. And if you haven't already at this point, go ahead and upgrade all the outer foundations to metal. And now let's go ahead and build in the third layer of honeycomb for our second floor.
This is where things get a little bit tricky since we already have this area floor stacked. To place in this single door frame, we're going to need to go and place it in through the floor, just like we did with all the rest of the doors. Now heading into the second floor of the 2x2, we're going to remove the general area of sheet metal doors, making it much easier to build in our third floor. If you're having issues building this, try to keep an eye on the bottom left hand corner and you'll see exactly what I'm doing and exactly how I add in the third floor through the roof. With all this complete, let's head up to the third floor and upgrade all of these walls to stone. Now we're going to build in our full roof access, just follow these steps and it should make it quite easy. Notice that I'm having issues placing the wall right on the back side, so you're going to need to place in a triangle floor and then the wall behind it, and then afterwards remove the triangle piece. Now let's go and get all our floors into place, and then we'll head up into our drop down chute and also add in all our windows and doors. And of course we can also fit a few drop boxes up here, just in case you guys are landing helis and you need to do a quick depot. Now just like on the first floor to place in all the doors, we're going to have to go around and look through the base. You guys may get occasional issues like placing through wall or no line of sight. If you guys get these, simply move to the other side of the wall and it should come up as blue. Of course, we'll also fit some boxes in our second drop down, as well as a shotgun trap to defend against anyone going deep, and then we can fit a few beds in the back room, as well as a locker. At this point, phase 4 is completed, and we can move on to the final phase 5 of the base. Now we're going to add in where our peak downs will be. Of course, if you guys would rather not have floor frames here, you guys can just use normal floor tiles, and that way you guys will not have to worry about adding in any floor grills. Notice that I'm just going to fill in these extra slots with walls. If you'd prefer extra windows, feel free to add these in here. Now if you guys do have a little bit of extra stone, you can seal off this honeycomb, which will help protect our drop down chute. And here I'm going to go ahead and skip through placing in all of the embrasures and outer doors, but I think you guys get the idea. And then finally, we're going to add in all the roof tiles on top of our entire shooting floor. I'll let you guys choose if you want to seal off this gap or not. I know some people like to keep it open to help fight heli or also help fight anyone who may land on your roof with a helicopter. But of course it does have its own weaknesses so I'm going to go ahead and seal it off. Now let's head down to the interior of our base and replace all our existing sheet metal double doors with garage doors. We'll also replace our crouch jump here with a ladder hatch. And we can go ahead and fit in two ladder hatches in our drop down, thanks to the floor stacking.
Now if you plan to follow me when placing in all of your boxes on the second floor, upgrade these two frames to metal, which will make it easier to fit in boxes, and then head downstairs and add in all the garage doors for our second floor. When building in all your appliances on the second floor, I would recommend not placing in a workbench. This is because any raider could simply use a jackhammer and pick up through your bunker. If you guys do not have a workbench in this room, it'll make it a lot more difficult since the raider will have to run out of your TC range each time they want to repair the jackhammer. I'm just going to give you guys an example of how I would build the second floor, but feel free to customize it to your liking. Once phase 5 is finished, the base is now fully complete. All we'll need to do now is add in external TCs and a compound. That will be phase 6 and 7. To start our external TC, place in a square foundation off of the middle side of our base. Then we'll build off of it with triangle foundations just like I do here, and then proceed to remove all the extra ones that do not follow the same pattern. Make sure that the triangle piece does not connect to your actual base, although it will still overlap TC privilege if the main one is broken. Now our last step is to add in the TC at the very back. The TC should be placed 8 triangles out, then we can go ahead and seal it off with a glass window. Now at the moment these external TCs have one weakness and that is of course that the soft sides of the foundations are all showing so anyone can come by and pick them out. So we're going to go ahead and add wall frames on top of all the foundations which again fortifies the connection to our main base. I'm just going to skip through building the second TC, we're going to repeat the same steps on the back side. Phase 6 is now complete and we can move on to the final phase 7 of the compound which will be adding a gate as well as our walls. Obviously again if you guys want something more complex we can go and take a look at Red Apple's gate design in the description but for me I'm just going to build out a ton of squares which is going to give me enough room to build the whole compound around all of our TC's and base. Of course, add in your basic walled off TC at the end of this line, and then we'll find a spot for our main gate. I like to go in about two foundations, and then I like to use two windows so I can see who's outside and inside my compound. Then we're going to go ahead and add a single door and then a double door frame. By using a garage door and sheet metal single door, the raid cost will be 4 rockets through the gate, and it's the same cost as if you were to just go through a wall, which is obviously nice since the raider might choose the wall instead. Now I'm not going to show you guys how to build the walls around in a circle, so I'm just going to skip through this bit, but of course don't forget to place in your metal barricade on top, and I'll just give you guys a quick bird's eye view example of what the base should look like at the very end. And guys, with all that said, the base design is now complete. I hope you've all enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys all in the next one.